What's up guys, Logan here with Logan Built. Tonight I wanna to talk some more transmission tech. I've noticed that we're getting closer to tax return time. I'm starting to get a lot more emails, phone calls, DMs, inquiries, asking a lot of different type of technical questions. And even though we've covered some of this stuff in the past, uh, I think it's a good time now to do a refresher course on some of this stuff. So I'm going to spend the next few weeks, uh, every week just making a video talking about something important transmission related that I feel like information needs to be put out there about. So that way when you guys are ready to start spending some of your hard earned money, uh, you know exactly what you need to get and what's gonna be the best bang for your buck. So tonight, this first video, we're just gonna talk about input shafts. Now, this isn't really a big topic to discuss, but I'm gonna go pretty in depth with it and explain to you guys why I only use two or three different types of input shafts from anywhere from a 500 horsepower build all the way up to a 1500 plus horsepower application. There's really only two or three different shafts, in my opinion, that you should be running. So let's take a look at these shafts I have here on the bench behind me and let's dump, jump into this. So I've got a couple different shafts here on the table. I've got a stock shaft, I've got a Sonics 23 spline, a Sonics 35 spline, and then I have a TCS uh, standard 23 spline input shaft. And I want to show you guys the differences amongst these shafts and explain to you my reasoning why I believe that those are only two or three different type of shafts that you should be running. So let's start here by looking at the stock input shaft. So the stock input shaft, a couple things that we want to note is how the splines are necked down here at the shaft. That's the first thing you'll see right off the bat. And then you'll see the size of the hole in the center of the shaft. This is your lockup release hole that's gonna get, uh, that's gonna come into play and be important as we get a little bit later into this. And then also wanna note that the stock shaft is a two piece and the input is splined into the hub like this. So with these stock input shafts, typically the first place they'll fail is where the center of the input shaft splines into the clutch hub here. Usually when you get up around 400 plus horsepower, you'll see these things will buzz the splines out of the inside of the hub. And it's not that big of a deal. You just lose all forward momentum. Usually it doesn't tear up a lot of stuff, uh, but that is typically the first place that these will break. Now, I have seen stock input shafts bust before, uh, but it is quite rare. I've also seen the hub, the clutch hub itself, start to crack and spider outwards, uh, but that is also rare. So in my opinion, the stock input shaft is good to only about 400 horsepower. And if you're really heavy, if you have a truck that is above eight or 9,000 pounds, uh, even less than that. So above that, the next shaft that I would go to, which I don't currently have one here, is a gear in 23 spline input shaft. Now the gear in shaft looks a lot like this Sonic shaft here. Uh, it's very similar. It's made in the same way. So uh, we'll discuss the Sonics and the gear in during the same time here. So you'll notice that on the Sonic shaft that the splines are not necked down. It is a nice consistent thickness all the way through that makes it a lot stronger through this part of the shaft here. So you don't have to worry about uh, busting this section of the shaft. It really up until about 1000 horsepower, depending once again on the weight, if you're under about 7500 pounds, this is a really great shaft for up to 1000 horsepower. The other big thing about this shaft is is actually a 300M material. 300M has some more elasticity, so it'll actually take some more torsional twist than say uh, a true billet steel would. And then because of the design of this, they've also made this a one piece. So the actual clutch hub is not separate from the main shaft of the transmission. That is really important because that is the first fail point on the stock input shaft. Now the gear and shaft is made exactly like this and uh, they have sent that out for some metal allergy and it has come back with uh, 1%, it's within 1% as strong and durable as the Sonics 23 spline shaft is. So I use the gear and shaft currently uh, in any of my 500 horsepower builds, my entry level 2.0s where we're still sticking with a single disc converter. 
It's a great in-between input shaft. Uh, I am testing it in some real life application stuff that is uh, really high horsepower, 1000 horsepower and above to see uh, what it takes. But as of right now, I use the Sonic shaft in any build that's 600 horsepower to 1000 horsepower and the gear in one for when I need an in-between of the stock input and this one. So now let's take a look at a different input shaft. So this shaft here, as you can see, has seen some better days. Uh, this is an old TCS input shaft, and this is a TCS Arizona. Now, it's kind of confusing because there's a TCS Canada and a TCS Arizona. They're not affiliated with each other, but they both make similar products. So right off the rip, I want to show you guys that this input shaft is still a two-piece. So it's a billet input shaft, but it has a billet clutch hub and then the billet shaft that splines into it. Now, these don't break nearly as easily as the stock shafts because the clutch hub itself is billet, but this is still a fail point, and I have seen plenty of them buzz the splines out in this area. As you can also see, because this is a billet shaft, not a 300M, it cannot take the torsional twist. So, this Sonex shaft here that has been ran in my race truck at 1200 horsepower and nearly 4700 pounds has absolutely no spline distortion in it. This one here was from another non-lock racing application and it, as you can see, was about ready to completely bust this thing, the snout of this off. Uh, this is extremely twisted and that's because it does not have any torsional give to it. And the uh, last but possibly most important thing about this is notice the size of the lockup release hole. Notice how much smaller that is than the factory lockup release hole. This becomes very important when you do a high stall converter. When you get into converters that We'll talk arbitrary numbers here. Uh, a lot of these companies throw out these 24, 2600 plus stall numbers. Uh, this small lockup release hole is going to allow that lockup clutch in that converter to drag when you're spooling. The higher the stall, the smaller that orifice, the more of a problem it is. It also starves your cooler circuit. And more importantly, it slows down the lockup apply. So it gives you premature wear on your lockup clutches. So the Sonex and Gearin ones are the same diameter internally as what the stock one is. So they get the proper lockup release, you get proper coolant lube, and you don't have to worry about the lockup clutches dragging during spool up on a high stall converter. I've seen pretty much every input shaft that's out there on the market, and the only ones that have the correct lockup release hole size are the Sonex and the Garin. So it is my professional opinion that if you're going to buy a standard size input shaft, you either buy a Garin or a Sonex shaft. Okay, so let's say that you are above the 1,000 horsepower range. You are getting serious about racing. You have a really high horsepower street truck. You're doing some sled pulling, whatever the case may be. At 1,000 horsepower, I go straight from the 23 spline input shaft to the Sonex 35 spline input shaft. Yes, there are some other input shafts like 27 spline stuff. There's a few different companies that make a 27 spline input shaft, but it is of my professional opinion and what I have seen that those shafts are not worth the investment. I don't even have anything like that here to show you. I don't run them. I go straight from the 23 spline to the 35 spline. And the reason that I feel that way is because they're not that much stronger than the Sonex 23 spline. And typically the types of material that they're made out of negates any gain that you're gonna get over the 23 and also that lockup release hole that we're talking about is always too small. So you know with a Sonex or a gearing shaft that you're going to get the correct lockup release size. So the 35 spline setup is a much beefier shaft. You can tell that this is the same diameter on the, the stem of the shaft here as the 23 spline, but it necks way up and we get a lot more uh, larger diameter spline 
for the 35 spline. We also get a taller spline, and this allows us to have more engagement in the turbine hub of the converter, making this section of the shaft stronger than what the 23 spline is. Of course, because it is a Sonex, it is still a one-piece shaft. And the other nice thing about this shaft is that it's a little bit taller clutch hub. So this clutch here, this clutch hub, can only accommodate uh, a stock clutch count. You know, you could get, you could put thinner steels in there, you might be able to squeeze one extra clutch in it. But this one is going to allow you to accommodate a whole additional clutch for the direct clutches. So not only are you gaining an increase of strength in the converter hub area. It's a one-piece shaft, it's 300 mm, it has the correct lockup release, but you're also getting to add some more holding power in your direct clutches. Now, Sonex also makes a taller clutch hub uh, for the standard 23 spline input. They call that the Smart Tech shaft. Uh, and if that's a shaft that you want, it's a great shaft. There's you know, nothing against buying that shaft. I don't typically run them because under a thousand horsepower, a conventional clutch stack up uh, is more than capable of holding a thousand horsepower. And so for me, uh, it's not worth spending the extra money. If you're gonna spend extra money on a shaft, you go to the 35 supply. Now, to my knowledge, nobody has broken one of these 35 spline shafts. So not only do you have all these added benefits, but you also have the peace of mind of knowing that most likely you're probably not ever going to hurt this input shaft. And then these input shafts come with their own stator support. Uh, it's a hardened stator support. It's made out of the same material. So you get a nice upgrade there. You don't have to worry about the flatness of an OEM one. And the important thing that I want to talk about to kind of finish off this input shaft discussion is this converter ceiling ring here. So this is really important on any high horsepower application. Uh, and the reason that that is, is because with the gear and valve bodies that I use, we're able to do what's called a ply regulated lockup to the torque converter. And what that means is, is the converter never wants to see more than 180 PSI to the lockup clutches. Above 180 PSI, you risk the chance of actually ballooning the converter. If you balloon a converter bad enough, it starts pushing the gear into the stator support here, and it'll start wearing this one like this old wore out one is. It'll start eating that up, eat up your stator support, eat up the pump gear, it'll push on the crank and if it's pushing hard enough i've seen it actually take out the thrust washer or thrust bearing in the crank so it's a really bad deal converter ballooning is very very bad you want to try to stay away from that at all times so what garen's patent design is is usually you'll hear people say take the ceiling ring off if you have a 48 so that way it allows that converter pressure to bleed off well, we actually install the ceiling ring, and then in the valve body, we regulate the pressure down to where it's 180 PSI maximum constantly all the time. So we never have to worry about over pressurizing the lockup clutches and creating a converter ballooning issue. And that still allows us to run however much line pressure we need. So say on a high horsepower truck, we need to run 200, 210 PSI line pressure. We want to regulate the converter down to 180, no problem. The Sonic shaft, it has the ceiling ring that we need. So this is, in my opinion, the perfect setup. Now, a question I get a lot about is why do you not build a transmission with a Sandra shaft? Um, the Sandra shaft is very strong. Again, I don't have one here. I don't do any builds with them, uh, but it is a 37 spline. So it's an even larger diameter than the 35 spline. It's a very stout shaft. Uh, they do some stuff a little bit different with the stator support. So they come with their own stator support. And like I said, it's a strong shaft. The problem is, is when you go much bigger than this 35 spline, you start making your turbine hub very thin. 
you have some space constraints inside the converter and you can only go so thick on the turbine hub. Well, on that Sandra 37 spline, the turbine hub gets so thin that it's susceptible to cracking. And it's actually the same thickness as what an OEM 68 converter would be. So that's problematic. I'm not a fan of that. The more important problem for at least what we do is that because the diameter of the Sandra shaft is so large and the stator support has to be made so thin, they cannot accommodate this ceiling ring on here. So we cannot do apply regulated lockup. Now, this isn't as big of a problem if you're keeping your line pressure below 180 PSI. But on anything that's really high horsepower, and especially anything heavy, you need more than 180 PSI to keep the transmission alive. So if you have to run 200, 210 PSI line pressure, and you don't have any way of regulating the pressure going to the lockup clutches and the converter, you risk ballooning the converter and tearing a bunch of stuff up. Because of this, Gearin actually won't even build a converter for a Sandra shaft, and that's one of the biggest reasons that I won't offer it. We don't have any need to switch away from what we know works. We know the 35 spline has all the right things. It's got the correct lockup release hole. It's plenty stout. It does everything that we need it to do. So that's why we run either a 23 spline Sonex and anything 600 horsepower above, or a Sonex 35 spline kit and anything 1,000 horsepower and above. And if we need something in between stock and the 600 horsepower, we do the gear and shaft that mirrors the Sonex shaft. So there's your rundown on the 4748RE input shafts and my professional opinion on which one you guys should spend your money on. If you guys have any more questions about these input shafts, you can call me directly at 859-466-7737. You can shoot me an email to info at getloganbuilt.com or like always, you can drop a comment below here. I'm always responding to comments. I also sell these things, so if you guys are interested in one, get with me. I can get you set up with one and let me know what you guys want to see in the next video. I've got a few more topics here that I want to discuss, but if you want something specifically ironed out so you know how to spend your money, drop a comment below, let me know, and I'll make sure I cover it. Thanks for watching, guys. That's all I got for this one. Hope you found it informative, and like always, we'll see you on the next one.